Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Bane or Ra's al Ghul from Batman, and like and subscribe for more loyal employees next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Wilson Fisk, the crime kingpin of New York and villain to just about every superhero in the area. Pretty impressive considering you're just a pretty big guy with a bunch of money. I promise, if you join the Patreon, I will not use the money to try and kill Spider-Man. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to get large, with big muscles to punch and smash desks over people's heads. After we're large, let's get in charge, with methods to tell our staff what to do so we don't have to get our hands dirty. Finally, we'll get staff, but like a stick, not employees. For stats, we're using the standard point buy from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Strength and constitution at 14. You're able to wrestle Spider-Man and you're just a normal guy. Nobody go look at the Spider-Man video and his strength score. Charisma at 13, you're able to get employees who keep working for you even when you go to jail. That's fear and respect. Intelligence at 12, I actually wish it could be higher, we just need other things more. Same with dexterity and wisdom. We can at least put them at 10, you're a fantastic martial artist. I considered monk, there were just too many other things we needed. Kingpin's kind of a Mary Sue, honestly. Now I hate this character for being good at things. Kingpin is a human, just a normal human who can throw a telephone boot, so Tavern Brawler will help us get there, with plus one strength, proficiency with improvised weapons, and unarmed attacks that deal 1d4 damage, though we'll actually be able to upgrade that unarmed damage pretty quickly. You can also grapple creatures as a bonus action after you make an unarmed or improvised weapon attack, which should stop all those nimble monk heroes from getting away from you. Bump your strength and charisma with your two free points, take perception for your skill of choice and the noble background for history and persuasion. You might not have been born a noble, but you became one through sheer force of will and punching. We'll kick things off as a barbarian, giving you proficiency with two skills from the barbarian list like athletics and intimidation. I think the muscles aid in the intimidation factor. We're mostly here for unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your constitution and dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor, which is currently only 12, not exactly great. We'll get it higher as things progress, don't worry. You also get to rage, giving you advantage on strength checks and saves, extra damage to strength based attacks, and resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. I love the idea that you can fight superhumans because you're just so angry. Beautiful. We're Gonna bounce over to fighter really quick letting us boost our unarmed damage with unarmed fighting fighting style that lets you fight unarmed stylishly your unarmed attacks now use a d6 or a d8 for damage when you have two free hands and you can deal a d4 of damage to a creature you have grappled once per round which pairs pretty well with the bonus action grapple from tavern brawler you also get second wind letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action you need to be relentless if you're going to take over the whole city second level fighters get action surge letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest which should help you keep Keep up with the monks you're fighting for one round at least though if you're able to grapple a third level monk and punch them twice in the same round you'll probably have them unconscious third level fighters can choose a martial archetype and if you want to be the greatest crime boss of all time you need to boss people around as a battle master that'll give you four superiority die which are d8s you can spend on three maneuvers commander strike lets one of your allies use its reaction to make an attack and add a d8 to the damage i'm guessing you have a bunch of rogues in your employ so hold daredevil steady and help bullseye get that sneak attack damage off i'm assuming bullseye is going to be a rogue. I haven't built him yet. Pushing attack forces a strength saving throw on a creature, pushing the back 15 feet if they fail, and adding your d8 superiority die to the damage. Kingpin has some sumo training, push someone out of the ring or jam them into a wall. Menacing attack forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature, frightening them for a round if they fail, and you can add your superiority die to the damage. These are all fun ways to make sure that your improvised weapon attacks are dealing decent damage. Technically, you could use a menacing attack with a car door as your weapon. This also makes you a student of war, giving you proficiency with a set of artisan's tools. Calligraphy is the standard option, but honestly, you need cook's utensils to maintain your vegan diet. Kingpin's vegan, and he's 450 pounds of pure muscle. How much is he eating? I guess I've told y'all that I've been trying to lose weight and diet more efficiently. I'm six foot three and I weigh 200 pounds. There is no way you can be vegan and weigh 450 pounds and have that be muscle. No, there's no amount of protein you can get unless you just, unless he just doesn't stop eating mushrooms. He's just working and he's got a trough of mushrooms and every time he's not in a panel in a daredevil or a spider-man book he's just 
going for some mushrooms or and cashews probably probably cashews you can't be vegan and 450 pounds of muscle but it's not real four level fighters get an ability score improvement or a feat and for your staff we need a laser and some sleeping gas we'll do that with magic initiate giving you the firebolt spell for a ranged spell attack that deals 2d 10 fire damage and sleep which puts 5d 8 worth of creatures to sleep starting with the lowest hp creature and moving up from there no saving throw here just silent gas but that makes spiders persons a little bit easier to deal with they tend to have low hp you can only use sleep once per long rest but you can use firebolt as much as you want cantrips are great fifth level fighters get an extra attack letting you make two attacks in the same turn or four attacks with an action surge that should turn a dude's face into something similar to an omelet wait he makes an omelet in the daredevil show he can't be vegan netflix daredevil didn't do their research Six level fighters get another ability score improvement. Let's actually use this one for more strength. Pretty much all improvised weapons will use your strength. The higher the score, the more effectively you can use things. I'd like to use the heavy stuff. It seems more fun than throwing a stapler at someone. Seventh level battle masters can know their enemy, letting you know a creature's strength, dexterity, constitution, HP, AC, fighter levels, or total levels with a minute of study. You get two pieces of information and you know if you're better, worse, or equal to the opponent in this regard. Knowledge is power after all, and you're all about power. You also get another superiority die and another two maneuvers. Disarming attack forces a strength saving throw on a creature, making them drop something they're holding if they fail. It can be hard to hold on to a goober when your arm is broken. Tripping attack forces a strength saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they're knocked prone. Trip them up with the leg sweep. You don't have to be a monk to use martial arts. There's a reason Battlemaster is called a martial archetype. Eight level fighters get another ability score improvement. You can use this to cap off your strength modifier to be one of the biggest, strongest people in a city that includes a literal boulder man. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you reroll a failed saving throw once per long rest. It's basically the great human determination power. Tenth level Battlemasters get improved combat superiority, bumping your superiority die to D10s, and you get two more maneuvers to use them with. Lunging attack lets you add five feet to the range of a melee attack. You're a really tall guy, you've probably got some reach, and you add a superiority die to the damage, of course. Commanding presence lets you add a superiority die to an intimidation, persuasion, or performance check. I listed those in the order you are most likely to use them. Maybe you do little dances for Vanessa in your private time? I don't know. 11th level fighters get another extra attack for three attacks with your action, or up to six with an action surge. Now you attack just as many times as your monk rivals do in a standard round, and twice as much once per short rest, along with having the same d8 damage die they'd have at this level. Your AC is pretty low, though. We'll start working on that at the 12th level fighter by spending our ability score improvement on more constitution. It'll also give you more HP, it's just some general willpower. Wilson power. I might cut that joke out. 13th level fighters also get more Wilson power with a second use of Indomitable. I guess I'm not cutting that joke out. It's worth noting that you can use these on death saving throws, though I'd recommend trying to use it before you're on your deathbed. 14th level fighters get another ability score improvement so we can invest in our constitution modifier again right away. Fighters just get so many more ability score improvements, it really helps you be that perfect human even if you're never going to be anything more fantastical than that. 15th level battle masters are relentless, so if you roll initiative with no superiority die, you get one. And you get another superiority die here, they recharge on short rests, make sure you're spending them, okay? You also get two more maneuvers, huge surprise. Sweeping attack lets you hit a creature within 5 feet of the first creature you hit with a melee attack, as long as the attack would hit their AC as well, and deal the superiority die in damage, in case there are multiple spiders persons messing with your dimensional combinations. Precision attack lets you add your superiority die to the attack roll of an attack rather than the damage roll for when you just can't get a hold of that daring devil. 16th level fighters get another ability score improvement, cap off your constitution for a respectable 15 AC. It's not great, but it will also give you 17 more HP at this level since HP scales retroactively when you improve your constitution, you're going to be living pretty long anyway. 17th level fighters get another use of action surge and indomitable. That should help you take over Hell's Kitchen one six attack round at a time. 18th level battle masters get to improve their combat superiority die even higher with a d12 for all of your maneuvers, letting you go absolutely furious and hammer away hard enough to crush your rivals quickly. Our capstone is the 19th level of fighter for an ability score improvement. We'll use it to grab some more charisma for more accurate firebolts, but also to inspire your crew a little bit better. Maybe inspire them by setting one on fire. How was that quick dip to fighter? Really fun, right? Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you've got simple tastes. You don't need armor, you don't need a weapon, you're always ready to brawl. You're also really thick with over 200 HP, so you're in the fight for the long haul. Finally, you're not really bad at anything, with no negative modifiers and indomitable to help with saving throws three times per day. For weaknesses, 
Boy, you picked some bad feats. Tavern Brawler is so DM dependent. If your DM is cool and gives improvised weapons good damage die, awesome, but they might not. Magic Initiate is also bad. You could have grabbed something like Tough to get more HP, or Fey Touched for Hunter's Mark or Hex to add extra damage to all of your attacks against a single creature. Finally, you're not good at dealing magical damage with a cantrip and an uncapped modifier as your only option. Thankfully, you don't need magical damage. You just need to grapple your enemies and keep slamming them into the ground until they can't move. Squish the spider, beat the devil, and make the city yours. Just watch out for more mystical enemies. You can't beat everyone with your fisto. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Bane or Ray Shao Ghoul, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun. I said Ray Shao Ghoul the other way. I said Ra's al Ghoul at the beginning, and Ray Shao Ghoul here. You can't get mad about it. Bye.